today for the morning session at the OTM Forum. We have two very special guests joining us here today. And we are going to be talking about something very, which is very, very relevant to the tourism industry at large, but often does not get the kind of attention it deserves. So today we are going to be talking about the state of accessible tourism around the globe. Now, of course, most of you are in the tourism business. You get a lot of people to visit a lot of different destinations. But how many of us do we really look back and think that, OK, let's see, we have to reach out to a destination that is not just accessible to one person, but every single kind of tourist who might want to go there, which is why today we have Hideto Kejima, president of Japan Accessible Tourism Center, with us here today. Thank you, Hideto. Hidato is going to share his personal experiences and a lot of anecdotes with us. And he will be joined by Shekhar Maskar, the Chief Group Officer of Isobar India. Welcome to the panel, Hidato. Thank you. I would like you to introduce yourself. And uh, let's talk about your experience before we move on with the panel. Namaste. Good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm Hideto Kijima. Call me Kiji from Japan. So my associations is uh, mm, we run the website for tourists with mobility impairment, person with mobility impairment, like uh, wheelchair users. So we produce uh, many informations for transportations, hotels, destinations. So which which are the wheelchair accessible or not? So that is the kind of information centers. And uh, we also help international tourists who want to come into Japan. The last year, our association helped 70 or 80 groups in the world. Moving on to you, Shekhar, I would like you to introduce yourself and tell us what ISOBAR does in the accessible tourism space. Sure, thank you so much, uh, Lavina. So uh, basically, I represent ISOBAR India, which is uh, primarily a um, digital advertising and marketing company. It's, it has got a global presence. Um, we, we really do not do specially anything in the accessible tourism area, but we have done projects which are you know, uh, trying to facilitate accessible tourism uh, in the various parts of the country. So I'll talk about that a little bit uh, in detail um, after we have this uh, you know, discussion. Uh, so moving on, Hideto, would you like to make a brief yeah. presentation? So I'm ready for my presentations. So that's called Tourism for All. OK, let's go on. So this is my bio. So personally, I like traveling very much. I visited uh, more than one, 170 countries along, which are around. So, um, I personally, I, li I travel in the world very much. And uh, in Japan, I help the tourists who come into Japan. OK. So many asked me, which country is the best in my travel? So my answer is India. That's true, that because of a uh, low cost. So India, uh, but, but things, the street is not so clean, but uh, you know, the cost is very important for everybody. So India is my favorite country. So some good examples, there are many destinations. They have a lamp. It is helpful for me. So I can reach the Golden Temples and uh, Jodhapu, Erola. And uh, Indian Railway, the good railway system, and uh, it costs cheap. So I always use a three-part class. And uh, many stations, big stations, have the lamps. And uh, airlines, today so many airlines works well. And the Indigo is a good example. The boarding lamp is uh, quite helpful for tourists using uh, wheelchairs. And uh, hotels, the lemon tree groups. So last time I visited Gujarat, the Ahmedabad. I stayed, I happened to stay the lemon tree hotel. So five, six deaf people works there. 
And uh, my Indian friend told me the Raymond Tree groups hire the workers with uh, disabilities. That is a good. But however, the mostly many Indians don't understand, don't pay attention the person with disabilities and especially the accessible tourism. So for example, this expo center, I, when I go to toilet, but uh, there are many steps in front of the toilet. It means I cannot do toilet here. And uh, I'm hungry, so when I go to the food court, there are many steps, no lamps. So I'm very sad, so lack of accessibility. And uh, also the many hotels don't have uh, lamps, no elevators, and uh, no rooms for persons with disabilities. And uh, there are many, yeah, many things to change here. So the, talking about accessible tourism, so I wanna say that this is a new market. So my country, Japan, is an aging society is coming. So accessible tourism is not only for persons with disabilities, that is uh, for elderly friendly. And uh, the, today, uh, many people have uh, less chance to travel. And uh, if the tourist sectors um, promote accessible tourism, they have uh, customers for family tourism with uh, grandparents and with grandchildren. And uh, also, it is often be said, three keywords. So uh, people's traveling tend to the off seasons and tend to the long stay and uh, many, with many numbers. That is a good business chance. So uh, I want to say that not only for leisure, the, to go to the conference, uh, wedding party, and the shopping. This is not only for leisure, for tourism. And uh, not only for persons with disabilities, and uh, many persons who feel difficulties for traveling. And uh, Singapore, so my first visit to Singapore is uh, 20 years ago. So 20 years ago, the metro did not allow me to use, uh, did, not, did not allow me to use, I mean, the, they say the wheelchairs to use the metro, Th that was dangerous. So do not use. So this is a, that was the discrimination. Also the stations that did not have a lift. However, today completely change. They change mind. So now Singapore is a quite wheelchair friendly destinations. All metro stations have uh, elevators and uh, many destinations are quite friendly. That is a good example. I hope that India Ten years later, change better. And Saudi Arabia, you know, many Muslims want to go to Mecca, the Hajji or Omrahs. So about ten years ago, Mecca changed. They have a corridor, second corridors for elderly and wheelchair users. That that is a change. So tourist destinations. The world is changing now that they accept uh, wheelchair tourism. And uh, sorry, the, this is a Mecca. They have a new transportation system and uh, accommodations for wheelchair users and the elderly. So, how to promote the accessible tourism? One idea is uh, expanding a target that is pushed to be popular. So, say that not only for wheelchairs. So this is the accessibility it means for persons with luggage or persons with uh, baby stores and the uh, elderly. We call the universal designs, the understanding the facility for everybody. So the Europeans, the bus, you know, the lower floors, the wheelchairs, elderly is easy to access. Also the many baby stores. Bus, like this. This is not, this facility is 
for everybody kind. So I think that in India, I'm surprised no baby buggy in town. In my country, Japan, the many families go outside with baby, the baby stores. So this is a new market. Uh, you have a lot of children here. If the families can go outside with baby buggy, that is more mature societies. So accessibility is works not only for person with disability, it is for everybody, I want to say. Yeah, once again, the keywords, not only for disabled, the kind for everybody, and the thing before built. So Mumbai, you are now making a new metro system. I hope new metros kind for everybody, that with the elevators, lamps, the wheelchair can use, baby strollers can use, elderly can use. And uh, this is the last slide. That, uh, and uh, my association, that I open for the information. So change anxiety, the, the possibilities. If somebody find our website and uh, many wheelchair users enjoy uh, Japan tourist destinations, so once they find the photos, so they think, ah, I want to go there. That is a photo is easy to understand for all the. And uh, some tourist destinations show the how is the route. This is the red line is the wheelchair route in the temples. And the hotels, the, some hotels show the room photos, so users can understand that uh, this facility is good for me or uh, not good for me. And uh, I mean, the information is uh, very important and uh, easy to do now. And uh, change each other, the transportation, hotels, and uh, destinations all connect. So just um, please think about the some minorities and uh, person with disabilities and uh, wheelchair people. So everybody want to travel anywhere. So I hope the India change better and better to, in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Hidato. That was a very, very succinct and very informative slideshow that we just saw right now. Uh, but just to mention an interesting fact here, even though we may be a little slow on adapting accessible tourism practices worldwide, there are some places which are very deep into it. You'd be surprised to know that 80% of the metro stations in Barcelona and 100% of their bus stops are wheelchair accessible. In Sicily, you can do scuba diving even though if you have, you know, maybe you're blind or you cannot swim because they're well equipped to support that. So, of course, I, we can definitely see that there are changes being made. And what I personally feel is that in making accessible tourism the talk of the day, in making it a reality, technology plays a very, very important role. And this is where I would like to ask Shikhar that, would you just throw some light on, you know, how technology can be a big enabler in accessible tourism worldwide? Uh, sure. So, um, uh, Hiddu, thank you so much for your uh, points of view about accessibility in India. Um, and I totally agree with the point that it is not only for the specially able people, but for everyone for that matter. Um, what we have done at ISOBAR is uh, taken an example of the visually challenged people who um, go and visit Azmer Sharif. You know, it's a, it's a, a yearly ritual where people go there to uh, offer their prayers and seek blessings. Uh, many of those people are visually challenged. You know, um, they, they really do not know which hotels to stay at um, or how to go about in the Ajmer Sharif Dargah. So um, we created uh, a kit where, um, you know, people staying in the hotels, uh, especially the, uh, you know, the visually challenged people, they can find their way around the hotel. Usually, uh, I mean, people who can see, they can actually see the walls, the, you know, where they have to stop or open the doors. But for visually challenged people, it's, it's a real difficult task. So I'll, I'll play a short video where it'll show uh, what we've actually done. And it has really been a great success story for us with inquiries coming in from uh, places like Brazil and Mexico to ask for those kits, which, ca which are really very affordable and do not really cost so much money. So if I may request to uh, play that video.
So while we wait for the video to be played, uh, again, like I said, a lot of tourist destinations have been pretty quick on the uptake of accessible tourism. And in Mexico, there are wheelchair accessible Mayan sites, Correct. which again, of course, uh, makes for one of the world's most interesting destinations, I would say. And to if see if the main place tourism uh, destinations can do something like that, then I'm sure, certainly sure that a country like India, with so many different tourist destinations and so many different places, we can definitely accommodate a lot more than we are currently doing. And that is something which can happen not just through uh, you know a government initiative but it has to be a holistic approach where every person every touch point in the tourism industry is working collaboratively with each Absolutely. other and Absolutely. ensuring that okay i will do this on my part to ensure that you know this person can enjoy the place just the way he wants to and so it has to come from everybody whether be it the state tourism boards, the national tourism organizations on a global scale, um, all the travel agents and the tour operators who are organizing trips, and of course, most certainly, the, de the destinations which we vouch for. With that, we have the video ready. We'll just jump sure. to it. There are 27 million disabled people. But the ratio of disabled friendly hotel rooms to the total number of hotel rooms is 1 is to 250. Out of these 27 million disabled people, 7 million are visually challenged. During the festival of Urs, the number of visually challenged pilgrims visiting Ajmer Sharif the shrine of Sufi saint Moinuddin Chishti is very high. But travel and stay are difficult for them. Hotel Ramada took a small step to address this issue. The hotel offered its visually impaired guests the Blind Faith Upgrade. The upgrade kit allowed the hotel to provide its special guests with Braille-enabled phone keys, Braille literature, and audio assist. Wedge, the Indian choice of seasonal reusable tactile baby to inform the prospective TG about the upgrade audio descriptions were created and dark social was used to reach them keeping in mind the enormous divide Ramada made the upgrade available online for all. The results are encouraging. But what's even better is that the upgrade allows the hotel to make any of its room visually impaired friendly. This time, there's a lot of peace. और बस ये सब सुविधाएं देख करके मैं यही कह सकता हूं कि खुदा इन लोगों को सलामत रखे। Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, in fact, this has been a very, um, I mean, the entire work that we did was so close to our hearts that it was initially taken by ISOBAR and then we sort of, you know, um, contacted Hotel Ramara to help us and, you know, convert all the hotel rooms into visually challenged, uh, you know, so that they could be um, used for those guys. And uh, the entire work was done pro bono without ha having anybody invest money into it because um, alongside the kind of work we do for business, which is digital marketing, we also give a lot of uh, importance to anything that is to do with social causes. And we had taken this up in a big way. And we got a lot of inquiries on the website to actually buy those kits 
and convert the uh, hotel rooms into you know um, disabled friendly uh, rooms so yeah that that was a great experience for all of us and just to add to your point um, aboni is that while the tourism industry the 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 travel agents they have to actually make it possible to you know uh, have all this accessible um, you know interventions i think people at large because uh, it, it is the people who actually see all these things happening uh, on the ground they should also take an initiative to reach out to the government and say that this has to happen to make uh, the rest of the you know uh, people uh, enjoy the tourism and you know their the time when they are at that particular place so yeah that would uh, bring me to my next question uh, which i would like to go to you for shekhar sure. uh, what role, uh, how aware do you think we are about the requirements of uh, you know uh, maybe uh, differently abled person in a tourism destination uh, because of course awareness plays a very very big role in ensuring that every person who is involved in the process uh, is you know gets the help required the information required to help out anybody who might be in need of it so how do you think we can promote accessible tourism and the how do you think we can uh, spread awareness so in fact um, all of us uh, i'll just move to the center of the stage because So um, that that's a great question. I think all of us are really concerned about um, you know a topic like this. While we do not know where to go out and reach out and ask for information, um, internet plays a very very big role in that case. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, the viral videos that you see nowadays, they go from one person to the other and they reach masses uh, within no time. I think we should create content. Uh, which actually educates people about this topic about accessible tourism uh, it doesn't really take so much money you know maybe uh, on a pro bono basis different organizations the government the uh, the travel agents the travel companies they should start creating content and make it viral and i'm sure people who really you know um, uh, look at improving this uh, you know area of tourism they will definitely share that with people who are concerned and people will maybe maybe big corporates can invest money into it and you know really make the entire change possible yeah so uh, nowadays we see uh, uh, there has been a huge rise in the number of travel bloggers in the country we have a lot of travel bloggers we have social media influencers who work uh, for anything and everything right they go to different destinations they promote it so do you think uh, doing tie ups with our social media superstars if i can say because they do have a huge following and that can help in spreading awareness so some sort of that kind of a tie up or probably celebrity endorsements if you can promote a destination you can definitely promote accessible tourism too i mean we have seen uh, priyanka chopra tie with assam tourism Correct. we have seen uh, ranveer singh tie up with i think switzerland mm -hmm. so there are lots of different celebrities in these different spaces helping promote a destination do you think such a tie up with a celebrity or maybe a social media influencer can bring about a definitive change in promoting or spreading awareness about accessible tourism it will it will definitely help uh, and i'm sure these celebrities will do it uh, without charging any money because it it is for a better cause for the better society and it will really help because um, you know they have a they have a great fan following and nowadays what has happened is while they do a lot of work to promote a brand or a product you know um, that affinity towards this kind of communication of influencers trying to sell a product has has started to go down because they know it's all you know seeded it's all paid for if you do something that is really um, something that the audience is uh, you know um, it matters to the audience they will easily uh, sort of accept that communication and we can spread the word really fast yeah now my uh, next question would be to hideto and we would try to some of the conversation with his answer hopefully so hideto you have been traveling for a fair share of years now so do you see any definitive change in the way accessible tourism has been addressed in global destinations from say what it was 10 years ago to today Uh, yes of course the now the world think about accessible tourism so and uh, in my country japan so one destination is quite friendly for people with disabilities but uh, this is not only for the person with disabilities this is now our countries we have a lot of incoming tourists for foreign countries inbound the tourism so if uh, the destination is friendly for um differences they are easy to accept the any differences so i mean the this is the accessible tourism is not only 
for disabled people. This is kind of the cultural differences, different uh, religions and uh, ladies, and uh, I mean the on the world tourism the destinations now understand the good destinations understand uh, each different thing and that their service levels is uh, quite high. So it means that this is an advantage for customers. Uh, with that, I would like to open the house for questions. Any questions for esteemed panelists? Yes, sir. See, I ask this very hesitatingly. I mean, this just, uh, uh, you can take it as a brainstorming, you know, that uh, see in, in India and uh, countries like India, uh, manpower is available cheap, you know. The assistance is available cheap, you know. And uh, investing into, you know, the facilities to make a place accessible is comparatively costlier, uh, rather than just provide some assistance to make up for that, you know. So do you think uh, it's viable to uh, think in direction that look, you know, till the time we have uh, complete infrastructure for accessibility, uh, uh, human assistance could uh, to some extent is a solution. And uh, what would be uh, your take on that, Shekhar, and your take, uh, uh, Kijima, that look, or, or no, that is something which is like, you know, uh, not even a banded solution. So maybe I can go for that first. I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, you know, we have a lot of manpower to help and assist uh, the specially able people. But I think these people who are specially able, they really do not want to take anybody's assistance to do their daily chores. You know, they, um, the, the, the self-respect that they have and the conviction that they have about doing their own things, I think we should give that freedom to them and let them do that. You know, while India might have so much of manpower, but this aspect is very, very important for those minorities to, you know, let uh, live freely and the way they want to. So I think we should keep these two topics really separate from each other and not really bring it together when it comes to investments of money. Uh, I think India has to go to that level really, very fast because we have been we have been laggards uh, for the longest time in this area. I, th I think we should, you know, just invest money and make our own. Uh, people who are specially able to live, uh, you know, independently without anybody's help. I fully understand. Ideally, uh, yes, you know. Uh, but uh, Kijima, what's your view? Like, till the time we have it, do you think it's it could work as a bandit solution or no? And uh, I think the in India, they always belong to the human resources. So the cost, yeah, exactly, that's a problem. But the uh, city government should have a law. So you should have a more strictly regulations. And uh, this is a long-term investment. So if you have uh, accessibility lamps, elevators, the 10 years, 20 years, it works. Not short-term, the investment. So I hope the city government and the politics should focus more accessibility. Thank you, Hidito, for being with us here today. Thank you, Shekhar, for showing Thank that you. video was wonderful. And I hope together we can walk towards a future that's brighter for everybody, that is inclusive, because we must remember that while some of us may be different from the others, in not helping and in not being compassionate, we are all disabled. With that thought, I'd end this session. Thank you. Thank you so much.